From the library homepage, click on the databases link. On the databases page, you have um, the homepage by default are databases devoted to a good number of subjects, such as are all subjects databases devoted to journals and magazines, online or ebooks. We have some subjects, so, so sort of a smaller grouping of disciplines, such as, for example, the social sciences or the arts and humanities or the sciences under some subjects. All subjects for newspapers, all subjects for streaming video and audio, such as films on demand. And in the tabs on top, we also have some specific subject groupings that will lead you to more databases that are underneath individual groups. If you are already looking for a particular database, you can quickly click on databases A to Z and then quickly scroll down until you find your database. Let's now do a search in our largest database, clicking on the Articles Plus, which uses the EBSCOhost interface. When you land on this page, the first thing that you should do is click where it says, hello guest, log in for full access. That way when you find something, you can immediately go and look at the full text of that article. So on that page, you will see a username field and a password field. You enter your, your WID number, and your password, and then, and their password, by the way, is your six digit pin you use on class web. So it should be all digits and six digits long. Click on log in, and then you are fully in that database. Now let's do a search. Let's do a quick search on climate change. Notice, by the way, as I enter it, there were all different other suggestions that we could have used. So as you can see from our search results, we have what on top what is called a research starter. And this is basically a subject encyclopedia entry that we can especially take a quick look at to get to learn about the item at hand. So as you can see in this case, we have a rather detailed um, encyclopedia entry on the topic, along with a nice bibliography of resources we might want to take a look at later. So definitely a good place to first begin. Listed down below, as you can see, we have a number of ebooks, and actually on the first page, we only have ebooks. Let's say that you only wanted to find journal articles. There are two ways that you can do this. You can either click where it says academic journals under source type, or better yet, I recommend clicking on where it says journals, peer reviewed scholarly. Notice that the dates are quite big in range, all the way back from 1788 to 2020. Let's say that we wanted to know the last, say, five years. We can um, bring our scroll bar up to then take a look at the last five years by clicking on that sliding bar. Notice that um, when you look at your results on the left, it tells you what type of resource it is. Since we limited it to journals, we're, all, we're only going to see, in almost all cases, academic journals on the left. After the title and after by, which is then followed by its citation, and keep in mind that the title of the source, if it's a journal article, will definitely be included in that citation, we have an abstract, a brief summary of what the article is about. 
we also have some good subject headings down here, which you might want to take a note of. For example, you might want to include, say, global warming as something to use in a search later, or maybe climate research, or better yet, climate change research. Down below, you see that it's available in different full text settings. When you are searching in Articles Plus, you do have the option to save PDF articles on your desired cloud. This will not show up, however, in other databases. But in general, most databases will have your full text options listed below. When you click on the title of the article, it will usually lead you to the PDF version of that article. So if you wanted to view that HTML version, you would want to click where it says the HTML link down below instead. One nice feature that's available for some HTML articles, and um, yes, it's definitely available here, is this feature. You can actually have the article give you a verbal reading, rather it's gonna sound like a computer as I hear here, and of course, it's taking its while to climate change in China under global warming of one point. So that can be definitely available for any HTML versions of articles that you're looking. And by the way, you can download these as a file. Four analysis methods. Five calculation of threshold years. Um, let me scroll quickly out and then back in. For some reason that pause isn't working, it's probably the computer speed of this computer, the speed on this individual com off-campus computer, this is my mother's, does not work fully fast. Um, if you click here, you notice that you can download this as an MP3 file, you can place this on your smartphone or your iPod, and then be able to play this in your car, this article, as you are driving if you so wish. This is, tends to be available in a lot of HTML articles in the EBSCOhost interface, as well as the Gale interface. And when I say interface, I'm talking about the general um, interface brand that is behind the database that we are particularly searching. Sometimes, um, I don't see one down below here, so let me give you another example here. Let's. Um, do a search on um, Doll's House by um, Ibsen. Now sometimes when you do your research, you might have something besides your PDF or a HTML full text listed below, and it'll either say an individual title such as this one here that says Gale U Full Text. And by the way, if you click on that below, it will um, usually take you directly to the format itself. Whereas if you click on the title above, you'll have to do another step. As you can see, this takes us directly to an article. Sometimes we have to click on the title again to then view it. And yes, here's the article, and notice here, once again, we have, because it's an HTML format, we have the audio format that we can also then use and look at and download. If you see a general full text finder link, um, something different will happen. You usually will get a screen like this. When this happens, you then down go below where it says, find this article. So you see down here, it says find this article in full text from Project Views. You click on that. And then that will take you directly to the article for this particular vendor. Now, as you can see, this article is available in HTML. You can also view it in PDF. Unfortunately, this vendor does not provide audio like the other two, so Again, it depends on the vendor. It's EBSCO and Gale, by the way, that provides that audio format. And one more thing I want to show you for this um, introductory session. When you go to an article and you want to have it for 
future use. Click on the email option, the envelope right next to it. Enter your email address. Always fill something in the subject line because it may end up in your spam folder. So let's say this is Dolls House Criticism number one. Make sure full text options are checked. Have you noticed that um, it will provide to you a citation generator of citation format? You should always double check these though because computers can only do so much. So we click send, we get a confirmation. It'll probably be, you know, up to five minutes before it shows up in most cases in your email box. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer. If you um, print your article, and by the way, if you print on campus, you need a go print card. But obviously, if you're off campus, um, all you need is a printer to then um, print it for free, of course. You can then um, choose what you want to um, print. But here's the problem here. If I select it from here, what I'm actually printing is the, is the description of the article. Whenever we're in PDF format, we want to be sure to click on the printer icon from that Adobe Acrobat toolbar inside the database. And that way, we will be very successful in um, printing what we want to print. Finally, um, one thing that I do want to warn you about when it comes to citing, I've noticed there's this um, little piece of yellow paper on the right icon here. We click on that. As I said, this is a computer rendition of citations. And this is why you always need to double check your citation. The APA version of this article, in this title, S should not be capitalized. And A should not be capitalized alone. The words in the title, yes, should be capitalized. Um, this should be capitalized, the Euripides, Medea. But other words are not capitalized according to APA. Only the first letters after a period or a colon. And then um, any words in between, unless they're a proper noun, such as Euripides Media or Ibsen or Doll's House of the title, A Doll's House, those would be capitalized. But otherwise, everything is in smaller case. So a computer can only do so much in automatic citation. Now, in other cases, it may cite correctly or almost correctly. I mean, just on first glance, it looks like the MLA citation is pretty much correct. Um, yes, MLA citation, unfortunately, requires what is called a permalink version of the URL. And this is important because the permalink is never the URL that's on top of your screen. It is what is available when you click on the permalink link or the chain link if it's an icon. And there, is what you would include as your perma link. And that's very, very important to get to the article itself. So that, in a nutshell, is the experience of, of searching into databases. If you have any questions, you can email me at nbuchwald at chabotcollege.edu. And, um, if you have any questions in general, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, be sure to click on our chat reference. If you notice from the library homepage, that will be in that list box that's on the right side of our general home page. And once you click on that, click on all the fields, including your email address, so there can be definite follow-up or in case there's a lost connection, so that um, questions you have continue. And a librarian from around the world, so say 2 a.m. and Saturday morning, will be available to help you and have access to our databases and can help you step-by-step step on any questions that you have. So um, that's it for today. And again, if you have any questions and you wanna ask me anything, my email address is 
B-U-C-H-W-A-L-D at ChabotCollege.edu. Or, um, as I said, any time of the day, and especially to get immediate answers, click on the chat box. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.